10 minutes before 7, and we're taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C., as Donald Trump lays out his plans for the first 100 days in office. In a two-and-a-half-minute video he posted online yesterday, the president-elect vowed to withdraw from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and loosen restrictions on energy production. Hey, very good Tuesday morning, and thank you so much for waking up with the Valley Today. Kyle Bosch here with Lisa Badeau as we get started with nonstop news and weather all the way up to the top of the hour to help you plan your day. And developing for you this morning, Dakota Access Pipeline protesters are now calling for the resignation of Morton County Sheriff Kyle Kirchmeyer. They say the tactics used by law enforcement during a showdown at the Backwater Bridge south of Mandan Sunday night were excessive. Protesters tried to remove a barricade of cars on the bridge. Water hoses were used to put out fires started by protesters. Then the water was used for crowd control. The sheriff says law enforcement can use whatever force it deems necessary when an officer's safety is in question. Now, the clashes didn't just happen near the protest camp. Another 16 people were arrested yesterday outside the law enforcement center in Mandan after blocking the entrance to that building. So far, more than 500 people have been arrested since the protest started earlier this year. The Dakota Access Pipeline protest has gained nationwide attention, and now some protesters are targeting the media, including us here at Valley News Live. Lists of phone numbers are being shared on social media, telling people to call different North Dakota agencies and media outlets. Valley News Live received more than two dozen calls yesterday and several more overnight. Yeah, the callers are from states like Florida, California, and Texas. One protester spoke with us saying that he's just fighting for what he calls human rights. If news stations are covering it more, then more people would see it and more people would essentially, quote unquote, try to fight back, like in lack of a better term. It, they would try to stop it more because I feel like it does need to be stopped. Our sister station in Bismarck actually had about 50 protesters outside their building yesterday. One person was later arrested. Eight minutes before seven, time to get a check of weather and traffic on the ones. And we start with meteorologist Lisa Green, because we could have some uh, tricky spots out on the roads this morning. Yes, we're already hearing about that throughout the valley. Places like Lidgerwood, back up to Grafton and Thief River Falls and over into Lakes Country. We're hearing from an iced over car in Dent, Minnesota, or someone who had an iced over car, and some tough travel in that area too. So uh, throughout the valley, there are some icy roads. Visibility is reduced. We've got some snow falling and a mixed bag of precip, which is why we have that winter weather advisory in effect for a good portion of the valley in blue. There's also freezing rain advisory out west in the James River Valley uh, until 9 a.m. Here's a look at the latest radar. We're looking at some pinks and greens and blues indicating that we've got all sorts of stuff going on here. You're probably going to see some rain and some snow at some point today and uh, certainly dealing with that here uh, through the rest of the morning hours. You can see it's just gradually clearing just a little bit from west to east. So things are looking a little bit better for the Devil's Lake area and the James River Valley here this morning, but it's going to take some time. The system's going to be with us a little while. So right along the Red River and east from there, uh, likely seeing increase or continuing chances of some rain eventually switching over to snow later on this afternoon. Temperatures right now right around freezing, maybe a degree or two above that throughout the valley. So patchy areas of icy roads continuing, and we may even see those temperatures drop a little bit here this morning before they go up. You can see that we're going to see that freezing rain switch over to snow in Fargo. Sorry for our camera here. It's having a couple issues, but we do have some raindrops showing up on the camera as well. Here's a look at our ice potential. We're looking at, again, the eastern part of the valley where the rain is still ongoing here uh, and in the north and south right along the Red River. That continues here uh, today. Uh, eventually, though, it does switch over to snow, and we're going to be seeing the greatest chance for accumulations in the east. That's where temperatures are going to be coldest and where we'll have the longer duration of snowfall going on into early tomorrow morning, one to three inches potentially in some of those areas. A quick look at our seven day planner today, heading out to the holiday lights parade. We may be seeing some snow showers in Fargo. Wednesday, things will clear out. Travel will be better. And then for Thanksgiving, maybe a slight chance for snow in the south, and the weekend looks good. Let's check in with Al. Well, caution is the operative term out here this morning. That's for darn sure. We have a lot of traffic. The road surface is wet, hasn't switched over. We hope that it won't, but make sure you're driving extra carefully this morning. Really busy out here on the Metro Interstate Loop, and I do mean busy. Westbound I-94 is just a steady stream of traffic, pretty much the same. Eastbound uh, I-29, same deal there. A couple of stalled cars for you. We have one on westbound Interstate 94, right near the ramp off uh, westbound I-94 on the University Drive that's been there for about a week. And we have another one just west of the tri level a dark color and I think it's a Lincoln uh, sitting there in both cases no light slow flashers look out for them again drive carefully today Alamut Valley today traffic 
Five minutes ahead of 7 a.m. now, turning back to your news headlines. The Grand Forks Airport Authority is getting a multi million dollar settlement from FedEx after the company moved its air cargo operation to Fargo. FedEx is paying $2.75 million for getting out of its Grand Forks lease early. It includes $900,000 to pay off bonds on the building and $1.8 million to replace the loss of income from FedEx as the airport authority looks for a new tenant. The city of Fargo is giving FedEx a $600,000 tax break. Developing for you this morning, NTSB investigators are on the scene in Chattanooga, Tennessee, trying to figure out what caused a deadly school bus crash. The bus was carrying about 35 students home from school yesterday afternoon when it flipped on its side and wrapped around a tree. More than 20 kids were hospitalized with injuries. At least five were killed. The bus driver has been arrested and charged with multiple counts of vehicular homicide, reckless endangerment, and reckless driving. A suspect is in police custody following a deadly weekend shooting of a San Antonio police detective. Otis Tyrone McCain was arrested yesterday and faces capital murder charges. Authorities believe the 31-year-old shot and killed Detective Benjamin Marconi as he sat in his squad car on Sunday writing a traffic ticket. It was a long-awaited acknowledgment and apology from the killer of Jacob Wetterling to the boy's parents. Confessed killer Danny Heinrich addressed Patty and Jerry Wetterling directly at his sentencing yesterday. At one point, Heinrich was seen wiping his eyes as both Patty Wetterling and Jacob's younger sister gave their witness impact statements. Heinrich was sentenced to 20 years in prison on an unrelated case of child pornography. As part of his plea deal, he led police to Jacob's body and confessed to kidnapping and killing him. Fargo police are investigating the deaths of a Fargo man and woman found in an apartment over the weekend. Police say that they responded to a medical call on the 50 block of 7th Street South Saturday night. When they arrived, they found the bodies of 27-year-old Molly Bernstein and 29-year-old Patrick Hensley, both of Fargo. The preliminary investigation determined the pair may have died from a drug overdose, but police are waiting on toxicology reports. This is the time of the year to take out the holiday decorations. But for some families, the symbol of a tree means much more. Yeah, the Valley Today's Christy Larson is joining us live this morning from the Fargo Dome with a great annual event going to help families in need have a little brighter Christmas. Well, good morning, guys. Brighter indeed. There are so many sparkling lights here at the Fargo Dome. You get to see them all, and each of these trees were sponsored by individuals or families or even businesses from around the area. They all go to families in need. But we want to talk about this Friday because you guys have a really great event for the public, too. Yes, Frazier Limited would like to invite everybody in the community to come out for Cookies with the Claus family. Um, Santa will arrive at 115. There's wonderful events for children, um, either decorating a cookie, bouncing on the games galore games, or even making an art ornament um, so that they can take it home and put on their tree. Um, we encourage the parents to please bring their cameras with so they can take a picture of their children on Santa's lap, telling them what their wishes are for the year. <laughs> it's going to be a really fun event and it's free to the public, so it's a really fun time for those kids and those parents and families. And we did want to point out one tree that Kyle and Lisa, I know you guys are going to want to come see in person. Don't forget these trees are up until December 2nd. But what do you think of that tree, guys? I love the bison tree. Horns up. Might That's have to, awesome. Might have to convince my <laughs> wife to decorate our tree in bison colors this year. Just I add know. a second tree, a bison tree in a different room. There you go. All right. I like it. There's, I, well, I love the bison tree, but all of the trees are beautiful. Christy Larson reporting live for us. Thank you. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Half of singles admit to doing this prior to going on a date. The answer, oh yes. Got to Google and see if anything <laughs> crazy comes up. Remember, you can take part in our question of the morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page. Uh, we do have some school closings and delays that we're dealing with this morning. Uh, Lisa Green, some roads maybe getting a little slick out there. Yeah, we're hearing from all, all places in the valley basically that there are some spotty areas of uh, ice. So please be careful as you're traveling today. That wintry mix will eventually switch over to some snow. So if you're heading out to the Holiday Lights Parade tonight, might see some snow showers then. Things will wind down by tomorrow morning and travel will be better through Wednesday even for the Thanksgiving holiday as well. So hang tight today. Take it easy on the roads. Yeah. Good timing, I guess, if we have to have this. Just get yeah. it out of the way before the holiday. All right. The Today Show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but we've got more live weather updates coming up right now on the Fargo CW.